Chancellor, Professor S. B. Muchumdar. Dr. S. B. Muchumdar is the founder and president of Symbiosis, a multinational, multilingual, and multidisciplinary educational complex of repute. A distinguished academician and educationist, he is also the Chancellor of Symbiosis International University. Dr. Muchumdar was born on the 31st of July, 1935 at Gading Lodge, a taluka in Kolapu district in Maharashtra. He had his school education at Gading Lodge and college education at Kolapur and Pune. In his master's degree in botany, he stood first class first with distinction in Pune University. He obtained his doctorate in microbiology from Pune University. He joined Ferguson College, Pune as professor and head of department of botany, a position which he held for 20 years. He was recognized postgraduate teacher and a guide for PhD students. He was a member of the Pune University's Executive Council, the Senate, the Academic Council for about 14 years, the chairman of Board of Studies in Botany for nine years, and he was also the ICCR's Foreign Academic Advisor in Pune University for about seven years. He has published over 50 original research articles in several national and international scientific journals. He has authored several books on life sciences and has contributed over 200 articles on science, education, and youth development. He has also been the chairman of the educational wing of FICCI in 2005 to 2006. Deeply touched by the hardships suffered by the foreign students, especially Afro-Asian students studying in Pune, he established in 1971 Symbiosis with a view to help them and provide them with a home away from home. He soon realized that education is probably the best medium for promoting international understanding. He therefore started establishing educational institutions, imparting quality instruction in diverse disciplines, example, management, law, IT, computers, biomedical science, engineering, international business, geoinformatics, media and communication, photography, etc. Presently, Symbiosis has 70 institutions and about 40,000 students from all states of India and 85 foreign countries. The Ministry of HRD Government of India conferred upon Symbiosis in 2002 the status of deemed to be university. Many of Symbiosis institutions are ranked amongst the top 10 institutions in India and they have a placement record of almost 100%. Realizing the importance of distance education, Symbiosis has established SCDL, the Symbiosis Center for Distance Learning, which conducts a number of online courses and has over two lakhs of students from India, as well as many foreign countries. All Symbiosis institutions are generally need-based. These are run on and adhere to the best ethical practices. The faculty is selected purely on merits and without considerations of caste, creed, religion, or region. One of the unique institutions established by Symbiosis is SIMS, the Symbiosis Institute of Management Studies for Defense Personnel and their Dependents, which provides management education exclusively for children of defense personnel. It is the Pune Public School managed by Symbiosis and which provides education to the children of police personnel. Apart from these academic activities, Symbiosis has also established a magnificent Dr. Ambedkar Museum and Memorial, which houses the personal belongings and memorabilia of Dr. Ambedkar. It has also established an Afro-Asian cultural museum. Well, Dr. Muchundar is the recipient of many awards and honors. The government of India has conferred on him Padma Shri in 2005 and Padma Bhushan in 2012. Tilak Maharashtra Vidyapit has conferred on him D.Lit in 2016. He is a recipient of the first Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam Memorial Award in 2016. He has received Punya Bhushan Award in 2009, FIE Foundation Puraskar in 2006, Maharashtra Gaurav Puraskar in 2003, the Top Management Club Pune's Excellence in Education Award, the Rotary Club of Pune's Service Excellence Recognition Award, the Rotary Foundation of Rotary International Paul Harris Fellow, the Giant International Lifetime Achievement Award, the Lion God of Puraskar, Pune Municipal Corporation's Role of Honor for Lifetime Achievement in 2006, 
and the Pune Festival Award amongst many others. With this, we now request our Honorable Chancellor, the most revered Dr. Muchamdar, to address the gathering. Over to you, sir. Thank you, my dear. Next time, I will shorten my biodata. Thank you. We started the conference by reciting Ganesh Vandana. I will now start my speech by reciting Goddess of Knowledge, Saraswati. Ya Brahma Shita Shankara Prabhupi Devai Sada Vandita Samampatu Saraswati Bhagavati Vishesi Jayatapa. Dr. Vidya, Guru Chancellor of our University, Dr. Rajini Gupte, the Vice Chancellor of University, Dr. Ravi Jamar Jain, the Director of SIBM at Hyderabad, Dr. Martin Carroll, Professor Leon Stimmett, our own Dr. Ramchandra Vitrajan, Dr. Dawood Ahmed, Ravindra Reda, directors, faculty, students, and delegates from as many as nine countries. Dr. Ravi, I must congratulate you for organizing such a beautiful international conference at Hyderabad. I wonder how you could manage to bring scholars from as many as nine different countries. You seem to be an expert in that management. Congratulations to you. It's not easy to bring so many scholars and researchers and academicians from different countries especially during this period of pandemic. I must congratulate you on organizing a conference, which as Dr. Vidya rightly said, and also mentioned by our Vice Chancellor. You have chosen correct title for the conference. Bigger, Resilience and relevance. All these aspects are particular not only to management science, all subjects which can be a proposed to do research. Be that as it may. In Sanskrit, they say that Sarve Bhavantu Sukhida, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhida, Sarve Santu Niramaya, which means may all be happy, may all be healthy and free from illness. These two lines in Sanskrit. Succinctly defined the exact role of education. All should be happy. All should be healthy. All should be free of illness. And I feel that the ultimate objective of education should be this. And more so, as far as management science is concerned, Humanity has passed to a very terrible and horrible time for the first time in mankind's history. For 10 to 11 months, the things in the world have become suddenly different. 
And many people say that pre-COVID, some people define pre-COVID as BC, not before Christ, but before COVID. Pre-COVID and pro-COVID, post-COVID, are going to be totally different. The post-COVID world is going to be a new world. The post-COVID world is going to have a new normal. As with this said, I often say that Corona is a big destroyer and a good teacher. It has taught us so many good things in life. Taking care of health, the value of family system, cleanliness, and how to deal with the outside environment. Mask, hand washing, all these things have been taught by Corona. And why sometimes when the what will be that new world? How will be that new normal? I read many articles on this topic. And all experts, scientists, management experts, politicians, ministers, and even our prime minister in his recent speech in parliament said that new world is going to be different. And one doesn't know how will be that new world? What will be the values? What will be the, what type, how economy will be transformed? Point is, if the new world is going to be different, I'm sure the education will also go similar changes. The management education, which was taught before COVID, is it going to be the same in post-COVID? Marketing, HR, systems, all these things which you were talking, and the principles which apply to these disciplines, are they going to be the same in post-COVID era also. I'm afraid not. And therefore, there is, a, there is a tremendous need to do research in management science from different, in different directions. And that is precisely you are meeting today and tomorrow also, yesterday also. This rigor, relevance, and resilience. I am pretty sure that resilience and relevance are going to be different strategies in post-COVID era. So my submission to all the scholars, researchers, and delegates who are assembled here to discuss on this topic as to what should be Direction of research in management science in terms of rigor, resilience, and relevance, they should take into account what will be the management science, what will be the new emerging disciplines which were unknown so far are likely to emerge. Post COVID era has created a different attitude all over the world. For the first time, there are signs that the European Union is going to track. Britain has already come out. Some nations are thinking in terms of their own countries, their own countries' welfare. So EU is also shaky. 
Now, what is happening in the realm of politics, in the realm of nationalism, is bound to be reflected in education, and either it should be reflected in education and more so in management education. Who used to teach man management, time management? The principles of HR you have been teaching so far. Systems. Take any branch of management science and ask question to yourself whether that branch is going to be the same, whether the pedagogy and the principles that you were teaching in pre-COVID era will be the same in post-COVID era. I think the scholars who are assembled from different countries should give serious thought to this. Today, I'm going to suggest what was going on in my mind for so many days. And I'm going to start to share my thought with you by posing one question. Can there be something like Indian management? I repeat, can there be something like Indian management? Because the cultures, the values, ethics, the behavior of individuals in the society, our attitudes, our perceptions are unique to our country. And they may, not, they may be different in different countries. And religion has played a great role for a millennia in shaping these attitudes, in shaping these values. And therefore, I sometimes feel that there is a reason to think about a rising discipline which I call Indian management. We have several IMs. Indian Institute of Management. But now my question is, can there be an Institute of Indian Management? And this management, Institute of Indian Management should be based on Western wisdom, on India's philosophy of Vedanta. Can our management be based on Vedanta philosophy? Upanishad, epics like Ramayana and Bhavana. And we had invited some speakers many years ago to address our students. And they were beautifully narrating that in Mahabharata, in Ramayana, in Vedanta, in Upanishad, there are many lessons in management which are relevant to Indian ethos, Indian culture, Indian values, Indian morals. Can we evolve our own education system, education in management? Well, I was discussing with somebody, some scholar in Pune, whether we like it or not, if you don't like it, forget it. But at least there is a point in what he told me. He said, Dr. Mudumdar, management institutions in Europe are based on Christianity. Management institutions in China, Japan are based on Buddhism. Why not have our own management system which is based on Vedanta. So instead of IIMs, I can repeat, can there be Institute of Indian Management? And I shall be very happy 
to apply rigor, resilience, and relevance, taking into consideration our Indian traditions. And therefore, I plead to you. For example, we often say that Marwaris have a different type of religion, Marwari religion. And the other day I happened to read that in Harvard University there is a special chair which is entirely devoted to Barwani Benegas. Sindhi, who by and large migrated from Sindh province in Pakistan and came to India as refugees, initially I was in college that time. And whenever we used to see a Sindhi person selling limited, limited tablets or small garbage on the street, we used to address them as he is Nirvasu. You think he is a refugee. But that resilience, rigor, and relevance was in their blood. And the same Sindhi community today have risen, and many of them have found their names in Fortune, Fortune magazine. So, what principles of management they adopted? Marwari, Sindhi. My point is, I have given these two as examples. But personally, I feel that our Vedas, Upanishads, they are minds of wisdom. Can we apply those? Can we dig the wisdom in the epics? Vedas and Upanishads, I am repeating this, sorry, sorry for repeating this, but I am repeating this because. That should, this should form, form the core of evolving what I call Indian management science. So there can be so many examples. And if our SIBM is Hyderabad, take up this as a project, research project, perhaps Dr. Ravi, you will be a pioneer in starting at least one paper in Indian management. Our Prime Minister has announced that our country should be Atma Nirvan. What does it mean? Our country should be self reliant, self sufficient. Independent. But that does not mean that we should do away with interdependence. Yes, we should have a relationship with other countries. But in our country, we must be Atma Nirvar. Now, is it possible that we can find out some solutions, some lessons in Vedanta? in Upanishadha, in Rabai, in Bhavana. Many days ago, I happened to read a book written by my Mr. Patnai. And what beautiful book it is. He has selected certain occasions and events in Bhavana, Rabai. And then he explains those events in terms of Management. So instead of depending upon Western thoughts of management, Western methodology of management science, Western books written by management science, can we Indianize the management science and do research with rigor, relevance, and resilience? These are the thoughts which I wanted to share with you today. These are the thoughts 
which you may, if you like, discuss in this conference. But believe me, the post-COVID world is going to be certainly different. New normal is going to be certainly different. And every nation will become introspective and try to dig the wisdom available in that particular nation culture. Because ultimately, all human activities are shaped and molded by the culture, ancient culture, tradition. So there is a great scope for we in our country to think about evolving what I call Indian management science. Whether management is a science or whether management is art, personally I feel it is both science as well as art. So, my message to you, Dr. Ravi, please, please give thought to this and let us explore the possibility. Let us connect the concept of Atma Bharat, Atma, Dir Atma Dirvarta, and believe me, Atma Dirvarta will ultimately lead to Atma Dirvaya. You should be fearless. You should be courageous. How? Management is the key to become Atma Dirma. To become Atma Dirma. So these are the thoughts which I wanted to share with you. I was really touched when Vidya was telling about me, daughter, raising father is a very most refreshing thing. Thank you, Vidya, for your nice words about me. But that we have SIBM in Hyderabad, SIBM in uh, Bangalore, we have SIBM in Noida. Besides SIBM in Pune, SCMHN. In fact, Symbiosis has so many management institutions. Some people ask me, Dr. Rajuda, why do you have so many institutions? We have Telecom Management Institute, we have IT Management Institute, we have HRD Management Institute. But let me tell you that each management institute that Symbiosis established has a tale to tell, it has a story to tell. It had, when it was started, it had great relevance. And in symbiosis, there is tremendous resilience. Resilience to change the syllabus. Resilience, if some, some topic is not relevant, we drop it. Even some institution is not doing well, you have to remove it. So, rigor, relevance, and resilience, they constitute the part of any administration, any management. And more you do research, more you become wise, more you become aware. So, with these few words, Dr. Ravi, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with you some thoughts which are literally making me restless for so many days. I wish this conference great success and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, and uh, thank you for uh, leaving us with uh, leading thoughts. And certainly we'll work on the Institute of Indian Management or Bharatiya Management, and we'll come up with uh, some results as you have given us the homework. Thank you so much for the leading thoughts. Thank you, sir.